Scorpio Venator, is it real or is it made up? Hi, my name is Dr. Brian Curtis and I'm one of the paleontologists here at Fossil Crates. And today I'm here to answer the question, is a Scorpio Venator a real dinosaur? Well, it is. It was actually named in 2008. It is known from an articulated skeleton that had the head, the hind limb, lots and lots of the vertebrae, in fact, all of the neck, all of the back, all of the pelvis, and about half the tail. It was missing its arms, and it is an incredible specimen. Scorpio venator comes from the late Cretaceous of Argentina, and it's an abelosaurid. Now, you may know Abelosaurus from its way more popular cousin, Carnotaurus. I've actually touched the original holotype specimen in Argentina, in Buenos Aires, with Jose Bonaparte. It was really cool. Abelosaurs are known for a couple of interesting things. One, they have some peculiar skulls. Their skulls are thicker than your typical theropod dinosaur. Some of them have these horns like Ceratosaurus, the Abelosaurus ancestor, has a nose horn, and Carnotaurus has the huge horns over its eyes. Scorpio venator has a complete skull, and that skull is full of bumps all over the side of it, really rugose texture. And we'll come back to that. Abelosaurs are known for their incredibly interesting and unique arms. Note the shoulder blade. It's really, really long, much longer than its arm. And when you look at the arm, the humerus is very short, stubby, yet powerful. The radius and ulna are extremely reduced, and its metacarpals are even tinier. The phalanges are few and far between, and it has no claws. With seemingly no fingers, it's quite possible that this hand ended in a mitten. The arms were extraordinarily tiny. They make T-Rex arms look long. What they were used for, no one knows. The best guess that I've read is that they were used for some kind of display or communication. Beyond that, it's anyone's guess. So let's shift over to look at the skeleton and some cool features that you can observe. The skull is gorgeous. It's cervical vertebrae. The complete neck is attached to the back. And that all looks like it has extra strengthening. It appears as if the vertebrae could be used almost like a rod. And what you see here, these are each individual images taken from their respective papers. I have modified them slightly and replicated them to show how they would articulate. What you see is some incredible transverse processes. Those are those broad wings. I've never seen anything like that before. And the fact they touch the one in front, that is incredible. It provides a huge shelf for muscle attachment while also potentially stiffening the entire tail. This is happening in multiple genera of abelosaurs. Definitely unique and something I've never seen before, probably related to the stiffening of the vertebral column. But why would that be? Well, there are some hypotheses, so let's talk about a few. The head, it reminded me of the marine iguana that I looked at in Galapagos Islands. Amblyrhynchus cristatus is a marine iguana, and they're known for locking their bumpy heads, very similar looking bumpiness to our good friend Scorpio venator, and pushing against one another. On a number of occasions, I watched them fight, head down, using their legs to gain purchase as they pushed back and forth, round and round. It was incredibly cool to watch, and it was a great privilege and honor to be present. That got me thinking, and I'm not the first one to think this, but what if Scorpio Venator's skull was used in the exact same fashion? Since it doesn't have hands, they could just lean their heads into one another and then push. We see this in many mammals today as well, as they squabble for territory or dominance in the general area, and over food too. And if you're pushing, they have power for legs. If they're pushing hard enough, they could conceivably knock the other down, at which point they could get in a kick or two, maybe a quick bite saying, get out of here. And the other would run away with its tail. Well, not tucked between its leg because there's no way it could do that, but it would scurry off nevertheless because why fight to the death when you can live to fight another day? I think that that is one strong possibility, especially when you look at how the neck is built with the extra stiffness in it. Now there's another interpretation of this, which is they may have used these very thick skulls like giraffes do today. They might have saddled up against its opponent and then began thwacking each other's haunches. Uh, don't know if that happened or not. It's definitely a possibility. And if that's the case, what incredible 
scenery that would make. The so Scorpio Venator, it's been around forever. It's about 20 feet long. It probably weighed over 3,000 pounds. It lived in Argentina, an absolutely incredible find. I'm super excited to go down and see it in person someday, hopefully sooner than later. So yes, if someone asks, Scorpio Venator is not only a real dinosaur, but it's really well known from the majority of the bones in the body, including a complete skull. Uh, how this hasn't caught on, I'm not sure, but hopefully with Jurassic Park now making a toy for it, uh, more and more of the next generation will know about one of the coolest dinosaurs discovered this century. Check us out at fossilcrates.com uh, for all your dinosaur cast needs, as well as all of our social media. I hope you enjoyed a brief update on what Scorpio Venator is. I'm Dr. Brian Curtis with Fossil Crates. Thank you kindly. Adios. Be sure to like and subscribe for even more cool dinosaur and paleontology videos.